Привет, comrades, yes, come here. Um, it's come to my attention, I've been recording videos with my, uh, with my camera. Fancy camera, yes. But I've been forgetting to hook up my laptop to post said videos. So, I believe I have. I may have to look and see if, I may be posting and just forgetting about it. But whatever. Um, last time there was some issues with audio. So, I'm hoping that has gotten worked out. Maybe I need like a little microphone, headset, to hook up. I don't know. Remy, leave me alone. Remy, I'm trying to make a video. Say hi. Okay, out of the way. <laughs> so, for today's video, the reason why I can't have Remy here. Remy, leave me alone. Remy. I have a new member to the TF Palm family. Stop it, you're hitting my tripod. Shoot. Remy, shoot. Stop it. <laughs> Remington. I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna get him a treat and he'll leave me alone. <laughs> gotta keep it running because you'll learn how. Just how difficult it is to live with animals. Look, treats. Come here. Come all the way over here. Away from the camera. That's for one of you. And here you go, Dante. You're a good boy. You get a treat. I like to not edit these out because people will realize just how annoying it is living with animals who want constant attention. But they're also very cute, so I can't blame them. Now this new member, Princess Peachy Boo is what I've been calling her. She is adorable. Adorable. And let me see if I can get her to play. Here. Princess Peach. Hey little girl, come on princess. Guys, move out of the way, I'm trying to get princess. No, I don't want you to drive, I want princess. Princess, come here. <laughs> what is letting little boy babies from there? Can you see them? Can you see them? A little bit. Princess, come here. Where's Prin Princess? You can't hide in the corner, okay? I'm your friend, remember? No, guys, get out of my way. <laughs> you guys are making a mess. You guys make a mess. Why would you do that? Get out of the way. Come here, Princess. Yeah, there you are. Come here. Oh, my little job went pet. She's adorable. Patch, she'll bite me. Move out of the way. <laughs> you bite me. Move. Shoo, shoo. Nice guy. Princess, come here, princess. Say hello to Princess Peachy Boo. Isn't she cute? She's the most adorable. She's a little Siamese rat. Isn't that cute? I didn't even know they made Siamese rats. Where are you going? Look at the camera again. Look how cute you are. Look how cute you are. You want back in the cage? Okay. Okay, okay. Back in you go. Back in you go. <laughs> May Princess Peachy Boo is a special rat. She is... I don't want to strike one. Okay. She is almost completely blind. And she is a very adorable little baby girl. I just keep moving. I'm trying to get like I don't know. Possibly. Okay. But she's my adorable little blind baby rat. Um she's a little older than typically you get a rat about a month or two younger than she is when you get a new rat. But the breeder I got her from made sure she stayed with her longer to ensure she was completely healthy, that she could get along on her own despite her vision issues, 
and basically, you know, that she made sure the rat was capable of adapting before she went to a new home. So she really prepared this rat for the real world, and I, she was sweet. Breeder was like, I hate to see my baby go. <laughs> but she is a clean freak. She's always grooming herself, like, always. <laughs> you look at, like, any point in time, she's grooming herself. She's not right now, just because I said that. <laughs> But she's a clean freak, which is why I call Princess. Um, peach. She's kind of like a peachy, peach, peach color. I don't know. I want to call her Peach because all the others have, you know, um, a food name other than Patches. But, you know, I have Java Chip, I have Chai Latte, and I have Stroop Waffle. I also have Patches, of course. So I was going to do the food thing, do Peach or like Peach Yogurt. But then I realized, if I say yogurt, they're all going to be like, yogurt? Where? Because they love yogurt. But, um, I was going to keep it that theme, but then I wasn't sure. And Boo, because, oh my gosh, first time I saw her, I couldn't find her. Like, I saw this empty cage, and I was like, oh, there's no rats here. I lived in this itty-bitty house, like, made for hamsters. And she was wrapped up complete circle inside of it. It was like, it's like, leave me alone, I'm sleeping. <laughs> she was like, get out of my house. But, um... And after that, she basically fell in love with me. Um, and I say that nicely, without conceited at all, no. But I would try to leave, and then I would hear, I would look, and I would hear like a scream, like a loud squeak, and I would look over, and she'd like jump into my arms, like, "Whoa, hello, <laughs> boo!" You know, like you're there, right there, in your face. Um, which was very scary, because I'm like, you can't see. Now that now that I realized she couldn't see, I'm like, you would have gotten very hurt. But I would put my hand down and she'd, when I first started, you know, I'd put my hand down and she'd sniff all over it be like, you know, kind of like getting my thing. She bit me a few times. But I was like, it doesn't really hurt. And I was like, you know, maybe she's just scared. She's learning the new person. And then I realized her vision issue. So she's probably like, you smell like Cheez-Its. Are you Cheez-Its? No, you are not Cheez-Its. Because mm. I was eating it in my car. <laughs> so she's probably like, you smell like Cheez-Its, but you are not Cheez-Its. But are you? So she was sniffing me a lot. And, um, it really helped when I put her in her, when I adopted her, I put her in a cage with all my socks, which is a trick that you can hear about online. If you get a new rat, try to put it in a cage with a sock or underwear or a hat that you wore a lot. Don't wash it beforehand, which may sound gross, <laughs> but rats live a lot on smell. Smell is a comfort thing for them. So if you get something that smells like you, that's sweaty, so usually that's why it's, um, underwear, socks, a hat, you know, something that gets sweaty, then it has a lot of smell on it. So they usually like to cuddle up with it, or even just put it in the corner of their cage, they get used to your scent, so they're not afraid of you anymore. Or at least acknowledge your existence. <laughs> so I did my socks, um, which is something I had read about online, and it really helps with them. It helps a lot of rats that are afraid of you comfort really fast. What are you doing, little fatty? No. Are they done with their treats? Oh no! The cats are bored now. Dante, you're a good cat. You're very fat, but you're very good. Look at that fatty. You can't get my camera done. Dante, where is Dante? My camera, my blocking him. There he is. Look at my Dante. Hi, Dante. Boop. <laughs> but, um... You know, I'm gonna make a little rat... Um... A rat care guide thing, I guess, here. Okay, I was just trying to figure out what my screen was doing here. The rat care guides. One, don't let them out to play when there's cats around. Don't get your rat eaten. <laughs> it's really simply a good, a good little tip there. Um, that's not too hard to avoid, uh, as opposed to what people think. But it's also a lot about personality. Some cats are very interested and will try to get your rat. My cats, they may look at them, then they kind of leave them alone. They've, I've never had any issues with them. But still, if they're free roaming, which is why I let my rats run around the house, I have the cats locked up. Or I have the rats locked in a single room for them to roam. And that's for a safety thing. Because even if they don't try to eat them, the cats may like step on them or bat them around trying to play with them and hurt them that way. Now, another thing is, um, to be, make sure they have a friend. Rats are very, very social animals. And in fact, um, 
are you doing? Look at that patty, what are you doing? Hello. Rats are very social animals. I know, I love how I talk about rats, I keep showing my cat. But rats are very, very social. Um, they can die of a heartbreak. They can die of loneliness. They need a friend. A friend will usually groom them, will comfort them, play with them, sleep with them. They're very much about cuddling. It's a big thing for rat community. Like right now, um, you know what, I'm just going to turn it. Of course, I'm going to while I'm talking about them. If my camera will let me, it won't let me very much. My cord is very short. But um, right now, in the corner there, well, they were grooming each other. I started talking and they got scared, I guess. But rats are very social there. They're going to try to pull me in the cage. They do that a lot. Um, another thing is sneeze. I'm sure you heard the sneeze there, or if you didn't, they sneezed. And I, sneezing for rats is a playful thing. It's like, hey, you're my friend, how are you? Or, I'm just playing, I'm not really trying to hurt you, when they're doing like a play fight. But, you should be careful that some sneezing can be, um, can be a sign of sickness. Hey, princess, don't drink that. <laughs> but, um, some sickness can be... Some sneezing can be a sign of sickness, and that's more of like constant choo 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 like that. Whereas this is more of every once in a while they may sneeze, and that's just a sign of playing. Um, another thing to remember, rats love to climb. So many cages I find are horrible for rats. Now, I wish I could zoom out. My camera doesn't work if it's not plugged in. Unfortunately. So let me... Show you the biggest angle of my cage I can. It's pretty messy right now, but there is a big, it's very tall. And there's a little lever layer in between for them to cuddle in if they need to. So it's a very tall cage. I've seen so many, so many rat cages for rat cages for sale that are completely flat at one level. Rats do not like that at all. And there's some that may have a little ramp. Some rats may like ramps. My rats are terrified of ramps. So I took them all out of this cage. Ramps confuse them, especially those is it wiggly waggly? Wiggly waggly, that's what I'm gonna call it. But the like they use for ferrets and stuff, that really confuses their sense of balance. They're confused because they feel like maybe they're on water, like they don't know why the ground isn't solid straight. So I don't recommend any wiggling ramps. Which unfortunately comes common in a lot of cages. Hello. Now, another thing is, it's pretty important that their food is always in the same spot. For me, I have it actually hooked in, special hook in there, to make sure they don't move it. But because rats are very, um, they're habitable animals, they have a certain habits. And they don't always feel comfortable when the habits are broken. Like one rat may have no problem bringing the food all over the place. The other rats may be like, it has to go here. And they, they won't eat it if it's a different spot. That's not my fooding that's not my eating corner. I don't want it there. Like that corner there is their treat corner. They know if they're in that corner they get treats. Which is probably why they're there now, because they know I'm here. They're like, where's our treats? Um But that is their treat corner. So they have a very habit in there. And I do have one rat who's very, very picky about stuff. If I feed the treat anywhere else, or if I give a treat to someone and they run off to eat in a different corner, she will go after them, take the treat from them, move over and put it either in the treat corner or in their food bowl, and have no other words for that. Like, and then they'll come eat it in the food bowl, and she'll have no problems with that. She's like, that is still your treat, I'm not going to eat it. But it doesn't go there, it goes in the food bowl. She's very, very picky about that. That's Java. She's very, very picky about that stuff. Let me see if I can hold any of my babies while I'm talking, I guess. Hi, Chai. No Stroop. Hi, babies. You wanna come out and play? Now, it's very important for rats not reach for them. Some rats are okay with that, but most are not. You hurt your ear. You got a little chip in it. Oh, no. Most rats come to you. Stroop is very nibbly. So try to avoid. A good way to avoid getting nibbled on is to leave your hand completely flat. If you cup it, it can bite it. 
and you do reach for them, grab them in the middle like that, like this, not grab them by the tail, or you could hurt them. You got some little mites on you. Get back in. You know, not every rat likes to be carried. Shy did for a long time, and now she's kind of iffy about it. I think she's getting old, she doesn't want to be touched, which is perfectly fine. The other thing, every rat has a different personality. Do not choose a rat just because they're pretty, which I made a mistake with patches. Certain rats just do not get along, just like people. Rats also are capable of having mental illnesses, which not a lot of animals are. Um, which I believe the food thing for Java is an OCD. But a lot of rats have mental illnesses. They're also capable of having schizophrenia, as well as bipolar, and many other of the stronger mental illnesses. Which is what drew me to them so much in the first place, because, you know, I'm the psychology and everything else. And a lot of rats do have mental illnesses, and that keeps them from being adopted, or um, whatever else. That's also why for psychology, they focus so much on rats. Now, other, other sciences, they may do monkeys, or they do rabbits for testing cosmetics, and those are usually very abusive situations. I'm sure a lot of the rat situations are, but for psychology, they typically study rat patterns. Like, if I do this, what would you do? Like, if I moved your house slightly to the left, how would you react? And they would basically guess by how they react, or how a human would react, perhaps. And they do do some bad testing, in a way. They purposely give the rats mental illnesses, like they may sever certain ties in the brain to give a rat schizophrenia. And while that is very damaging to that rat's life, it does help science in a way that we now learn how to treat schizophrenia, or at least help it. Because we may see that this medication greatly helps lessen the hallucinations, or at least we can't tell if it lessens the hallucinations on a rat because they can't speak, so to say, but we can see that they stopped being as panicky, so perhaps it helps that maybe they may see things, but they're not as bad anymore. And so that's a nice way to think about it there. And so, no, it's not really good to give them a mental illness, but it's good. They, as I said, they do have a lot of mental illnesses naturally. A lot of them are born with it, or great, gain it as they get older. And it's a very interesting thing. Uh, there are very few species that have mental illnesses. And especially that they can still survive. And rats are one that they can survive pretty well. Like, they make do. Like, one may be OCD, like Java. But she could still survive in the wild because she would just manage a little mentality, you know, she'd be like, okay, so I can't have, I may live in a dumpster, but this part of the dumpster is my part. And they, they manage things pretty well, actually. They're very smart animals. Speaking of that, Java, you want to come out? The princess, come here, Java. Java loves being held and pet and giving all the attention to Look at the timer, Java. She is my baby girl. She's one of my oldest. Chai is my oldest. Java's only a few weeks younger. Don't leave. The cats are on the floor. You can't play right now, okay? Look at the camera. <laughs> hey, when you hold a rat, you need to cradle them. Like so. Cradle them like a baby, almost. Like you hold both hands, kind of like a little sausage. Little sausage, but hold her against your chest. Like that, yes. And a lot of rats like your shoulders. Java loves feeling tall. And a trick I learned is that she doesn't run off. Hold on to their tail. Yeah. Don't pick them up with their tail. Or use as a kind of a little leash, in a way. Back in your cage. It's not free. It's not playtime right now. Sorry. But um, they do like to have. Like, don't peek them up their tail. It is. It works, but it's not very good. Um. Basically, the rats do have no. Um. I kind of do the lead. Like, I don't pinch down the tail, but I kind of hold on to it lightly, just to make sure I know where she's at. If she does try to move, I try to grab her. If necessary, I do grab the tail. If you know it's for her safety. But the 
tail is, for them, a very powerful limb. It helps with balance and walking and everything else. It helps them stay still. They wrap it around bars sometimes to help them climb. They wrap them around each other's tails, as sort of like holding hands. A comfort thing, you know. Uh, mates do it a lot. Siblings and mates, mostly. But it's a very big comfort thing. Mothers and daughters and things like that. You know, like, it's a family or mate type of thing. Which mate, I guess, would be a family too. But, um... So, their tails are very important. And you don't want to hurt them. Some rats have no issue, of course, because of the personality. But some rats get really angry if you touch their tail. Especially if you don't know them well. Because they're like, that's a family thing. You don't get a touch with that. You're not part of my family. And that when they warm up to you more, they may not have an issue with it. Because every animal is different, of course. Now, a good thing for rats, they love Amex. The I chew there. I recommend bird camels, surprisingly. These are made for parakeets. 